Hi, hello, namaste, salam alaikum. Welcome to the summer update. I greatly apologize that I am totally unable to stream right now. I am currently on vacation on an island with internet upload speed of not good. So I'm resorting to recording a video in the evening. Just gonna give you my honest, unfiltered thoughts, which I would have done on stream today if I wasn't, you know, not at home. Figured the best course of action was just to do what I was gonna do on stream anyways. Just gonna peruse the patch notes and then cover the content they added. And that's really it, because this is just yet another status quo update. We're now entering year six of same shit, different day, or same shit, different update. Just a whole bunch of stuff that Valve dumped into the game that the workshop made, and a few bug fixes, fixes, and that's kind of it. So let's begin. Ten new maps. Ten. Ten. <laughs> ten maps. Like, listen, I've, I've expressed my opinion on this before. We, we really don't need new maps. TF2 already has, like, we're, we're approaching 150. I think it's over 150 maps. Sure, I think only 90 of those are in the normal rotation, and maybe 25 of them are actively played. And we just, we, we don't need more. I, I'm of the opinion that we don't need any more content in TF2. The game is good. We already have enough. Really, just focus on bug fixes, performance improvements, maybe balance changes to make certain weapons not useless, but beyond that, we really don't need more stuff. Four new taunts, don't care. 38, 38 unusual effects, because fuck it, why not? 20 of them for taunts, which no one is ever going to use outside of trade servers. And summer event runs through the 15th of September, great. Okay, general stuff. They did some interesting stuff in this update, which is pretty cool. Fixed workshop SV cheats exploit. This was nice to see because this was making the rounds for a little while. You gotta love those videos where the person covers the exploit or what have you, and they say, oh, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to get the word out there, and I want to inform Valve. But also, by the way, here's how you do the exploit. I'm going to broadcast it to my entire audience. Also, like and subscribe. Ah, yeah, you could have just put it on the GitHub and not broadcasted it to thousands of people that would inevitably exploit the same exploit and raise hell in the game. But no, you got to get those juicy, juicy views and those clicks and that ad revenue, don't you? Ah. Really scummy. Don't do that. Added language support for Spanish and Latin America. Hey, okay, this is actually a, a pretty cool change. I'm actually very happy about this one. A small part of me was still worried that Valve was going to enact the nuclear option when it came to decals, but they did the right thing in that now you have the option to hide decals on the conscientious objector, on flare, or whatever else can take a decal. Now every form of user-generated content is toggleable, which is great. That's just how it should be. Thank God they didn't go with some strange arbitrary moderation or just nuke decals altogether because some idiot fear-mongered people into thinking that cheese pizza is delivered inside of decals. Ah, just go watch my video on that. I completely picked that idiot's arguments apart. Still good to see that they did this. Not complaining. Again, probably should have been there a long time ago. Also something that I called for when that whole decal controversy fired up. That just should be something that's in the game and it's there now, so that's good. Ah, yes, they moved some maps around. Thank God some maps and other, like, special maps were pulled out of alternative game mode purgatory hell and put into their proper categories. For example, Koth Probed. I've been saying this on my stream for months that Probed and Invasion have no business being in the miscellaneous category. They just belong in their normal Capture the Flag and King of the Hill game modes, respectively. Because they're really good maps, and the only reason, I guess, why Valve put them in there is because they had bombs on them. But for some reason, Bread Space was an exception, and they put that in the normal payload category. Ah, don't know why they did that. Really nice to see these maps outside of that purgatory, because now hopefully people will play them, because I love Probed. Probed is one of my favorite favorite maps in the game, so hopefully it's going to be more populated and everyone can enjoy it in casual. Also, I believe they took Harp outside of the Christmas restriction, which is really nice to see because Harp is a really fun map, and just because a map has snow doesn't mean that it's Christmas themed. Fix the Neon Annihilator not getting crit attacks when hitting players covered with gas. Was this a bug? I, part of me thinks that they're, like, 
kind of hand waving this away. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, this was a bug. Like they fixed, an, like they fixed an issue. I really don't think that they're they were fixing an issue. I think the initial form of the gas passer not counting as wet when someone gets gas on them. I believe that was intentional, but now it's not. Now now you can crit with a neon annihilator. Great, that's awesome. It doesn't really save the gas passer from still being the worst item in the game because now you can crit one person every 45 seconds. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. The gas passer takes 750 damage to charge. You land one crit with a Neon Annihilator. You're a fifth of the way there. Ah, yeah, so you're waiting 45 seconds to do it again. Unless you manage to eke out enough damage with your flamethrower and speed up the process. If not, have fun waiting. Ah, gas passer still sucks dick, but... At least you have this fun gimmick to combo it with now, even though the extinguisher is going to provide more consistent damage over time with your flamethrower and flare gun options, and you don't have to sacrifice secondary. So, great. Onwards to what the people really wanted. Unleashed Rage. I think I've seen this one before. I don't recall. Yeah, just so it's like this random, like, hard, you're angry. I don't know. I'm not offended by it. It's, it's just... Okay, you're throwing a hissy fit, that's the taunt. Doesn't really feel like a taunt, just feels like you're throwing a hissy fit. Eh, not huge on it. Cremator's condolences! Pyro holds out a box of tissues and then weeps at the person he just killed. This one's okay. Personally, I'm, I'm not a fan of mercenary manifesting random object out of thin air and then interacting with it. I really don't like that idea. In my opinion, I think they could have just done a simpler animation where the pyro just does this with his hands instead of, like, pulling out a tissue box and going, Look, here, have a tissue. No, just do this, right? Like, ah, boo-hoo, you got fucking killed. I think that would have been more better. More better. I think that would have been better. A little more tongue-in-cheek instead of, like, oh, here's some tissues. Yeah, just, eh. Again, I'm not offended. It's just, I think it could have been executed a bit better. That's just me. And then, in a similar vein, we have Sniper manifesting a clipboard out of the ground and going, Look, aim here. Slim hand, mate. Again, I, and I've, I've said this on my streams before, a much better thing to have done is like, you know, aim here. Like, you know, you missed me. You could have hit me right here. Aim here. Like, that's a way better way to execute this taunt instead of having this random object phase out of the ground and Sniper interacting with it. Just do this. Like, haha, you missed. You could have done a much better execution on it. Again, not offended, but it's just not great. And then we have Canich. Get in the trash. This is your home. This is where you belong. Uh, again, not offended, but soldier manifesting trash can out of the ground. Eh, feels more like a Fortnite emote. There were better ways to execute the other taunts, and there's probably better options on the workshop than this. Thankfully inoffensive. Th listen, listen. Out of the taunts, thank God we didn't get another goofy vehicle taunt or like another instrument taunt or like, I don't know, soldier riding a camel or something. I don't fucking know. Something stupid like that. Thankfully, we got things that are actual taunts. Mostly, the one where you're raging isn't really a taunt, but at least they're mostly could be considered taunts. That's fine. But just... Eh. Dragonfly's nature. Ah, love, lovely. Just five, four? Four neon variants of the same effect. When they say they added 30 whatever unusual effect, 38 unusual effects, what they really mean is they added 10 but they triple the amount by adding all of the different recolors, so really it's just the same particle animation with a color palette swap. Frankly, I'm really sick of unusual effects doing this. It just bloats the volume of unusual effects we have in-game, and I don't think that's a good thing. Aside from that, neon, mediocre, grass, and bugs. Yay. Electrocution. This one's not terrible, at least it's not neon color vomit. It is pretty fucking noisy. I will say this, I'll, I've said this a million times, I think taunt effects were a fucking mistake, they should have never been added to Team Fortress 2 at all, but I will say at least this one isn't a massive particle effect either at the feet or around the entire torso, this one is one of those effects that's mapped to the body so it's not as egregious or annoying. If I were to have a taunt effect, I would prefer one like this, it's fairly inoffensive. It's just really noisy. I feel like they could have slowed down the particle animation so it's not so fast. Well, I mean, of course, obviously that's what happened. But they could have slowed the particle animation down so it's not so noisy. Might have been a better way to handle it, but too late now, it's in-game. And then we have this pyro set. This pyro set's genuinely not bad. The only thing I don't like about this, and everyone perform this exercise with me right now, take your thumb, cover pyro's head. What class is this?
doesn't really look like the pyro and the reason for it is the shoulders pyro's form is pear-shaped where he slopes from his shoulders down to his waist and it grows because the way his asbestos suit is formed to his body this one kind of slims him down and adds you know more width to his shoulders and makes him more square so it's not really the same expected frame of the pyro you would normally see is that a problem with class recognition is it a problem with team recognition no it's not i'm just acknowledging that it looks a little bit weird and not really really like the pyro beyond that it's not a bad cosmetic set in fact i think it looks pretty cool of all the cosmetics that we got in this update this is probably the best set that we got there's a couple others i'm going to get to that were pretty good but this is probably the the gold star for this update's case is is this this pyro set so distress signal ah uh, <laughs> why why do you have to make it a whole bunch of different colors you could have just done like normal flares but no we have to have blue and we have to have green for some reason why why do you have to have it be green you could have just done like even just having it team colored fine but you can't <laughs> why well, we don't need a whole bunch of recolors of, of effects man i'll repeat what i said before just oh. another we don't need taunt effects I, no one's gonna use this shit you're never you're never gonna see this in game you might see it once in, over the over the span of like the next year you might see this effect unless you go inside of trade servers it's gonna be a five dollar taunt on the community market that no one is ever going to use sorry that's just how people treat unusual taunts unless they're the super expensive and rare ones and even then those are hoarded by trader mains and you only see them inside of trade servers so and then fuck it fireworks yeah with a whole bunch of other recolors great loving it just ah never gonna use this i hate i hate i hate i'm done i we don't need more unusual taunt effects just uh, i'm over it first unusual effect happens to be the only unusual effect they added that i genuinely enjoy this one is really cool it's sparks it's embers it's smoke it's not five different neon color palette swaps it just looks really good it's not a super subtle effect but it's also not super in your face it also feels more so like a classic tf2 effect i've also seen this in game already i like it a lot i'm glad they added this one and again probably the only unusual effect that i like that they added in this update so cool to see this one good job to the guy who made it it's really cool very unique nice work <laughs> this fucking medic set i can't believe they added this shit so they added a lot of stuff from tropic crisis and this is my theory this is not me making a factual statement but because we see such a massive success with the volume of tropic crisis content that they added I suspect that this is going to be the format moving forward inside of the workshop scene where they're going to start amassing all of these contributions into a community update and then they can push it. The reason why they're going to do this is because this Tropic Crisis update was majorly hyped up by YouTubers, people on Twitter. It had a huge amount of traction and because of that they had tons and tons of ratings a lot of positive ratings regardless if they're good items or not that bumped them higher on the workshop and because you bump something higher on the pages in the workshop that means it has a much higher chance of being seen by eric smith and ergo added to the game this proved the efficacy of these community updates and you're going to start seeing workshoppers organizing all of their stuff together into these updates and pushing them as one big package and then people talk about them on youtube like oh this is the update that tf2 needs and then it gets all these votes and then you get a bunch of really bad cosmetics like these added to the game as a result. Ah, uh, this fucking soldier set is a goddamn tragedy. What happened? I'll get back to this one in a minute. But this fucking soldier set is a, it's a fucking crime. Look at this. Oh, God. Like, aside from the majority of his team color being removed from the full set. You have just the parts of his red shirt poking out and from certain angles using other cosmetics or skins, what have you. Gonna have a hard time telling what team he's on. But my god, they had to model over the soldier's existing geometry because they can't remove this jacket. So they had to model over the jacket. And he has like fucking chubby little sausage arms and chubby little sausage legs. He made him look really puffy. Oh my god, it looks so bad. Why did they add this? 
Oh, fuck. It's so bad. And the hat doesn't even look like a TF2 hat. It looks like a fucking Looney Tunes hat. Easily some of the worst cosmetics they could have chosen for any update. It just looks really, really, really bad. I can't believe they added these. Same problem for this medic set, man. Because they had to model over the medic's existing geometry, his arms look like little sausage arms, like little baby arms. Like you pick up like your niece or something, they got little chubby little baby arms. This is what this looks like. He's got little chubby baby arms. Oh god, it looks really bad. Conceptually, this cosmetic is much better than that soldier said. It's not bad. But my god, having to model over the existing character model geometry almost never looks good unless you really buff up and beef up the mercs. I mean, we see that with the Burly Beast, and we see that with the with the, uh, the Demoman abs cosmetic. Those look fairly decent, but these just look really, really, really bad. The hat on this set is not terrible. I actually don't mind this hat at all. I think it's pretty decent. Why did they add these? Uh, like, I'll show a picture of this set where the soldier is T-posing. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe they put this in the game. Melting Mohawk. Okay, so this one is genuine false advertising because this one is a 2D sprite. And if you were to look at the class head-on, you see nothing. It's just a flat plane. And what's really funny is people were calling out this workshop around doing this, but as soon as people started doing that, he turned off comments. They, he didn't want people knowing that this was going on. And he only showed idealized angles to make it look the make it look as cool as possible. But again, you look at this dead on from the front, it's just flat. You don't see it because this is a 2D sprite. So great for false advertising on you, man. Once again, you get a fat paycheck from Valve for making, frankly, a really shitty effect. So yeah, godlike. Like, that's not even like TF2. This is something that's like out of Dota. Like, at least you could say the fireworks and the flares coming out from behind the mercenaries, you could at least kind of put that in a more general category, I suppose. But this looks like it's something out of a, a different video game entirely. Ugh. No thanks. Rare Shine. So we have Golden Community Sparkles. This one's okay. Rainbow Reverie. Uh, apparently this got a DMCA notice. Uh, I saw this earlier, not sure what this means, if this is true, or if someone just filed this because they were salty or they didn't like the effect. I'm not hideously offended by this one. At least it's not like a violent, hyper, like, noisy effect flying around the head. It's more, it's almost a static PNG. It almost looks like Bunsen burner flames, more so than like, uh, like refracted light. I'm not offended by it, but I do like it less than the golden sparkles that we just looked at. Distant Drift? This one I have never seen before, so I guess it's like you're moving through the stars. It's like a discount nebula. Honestly, also, not really offended by this one. I'm really thankful that they kept the particle animation slow. A very common thing I see on the workshop is they make the particle animations way, way too fast. I would say, actually, I think I like this one. This one's now second place. Cuban Smoke, then this one, then Gold Sparkles, then the, the, the refractor light. This one's pretty cool. I am very much happy to see more Valve game references tied into TF2 and they're stylized to look like TF2 cosmetics. Gordon Freeman set, pretty good. Goatee glasses combo for Medic. He's a doctor, Gordon Freeman's a doctor. Or, well, Medic is a doctor, so to speak. But hey, pretty good. Good beard, good glasses combo, not bad at all. Paintable beard because fuck it, why not? And then you have the vest. The vest is not the worst, I would say. I do appreciate that the heart monitor is the only thing that's paintable. They could have made the paint region a lot worse. Happy they kept it tame. It is a little weird to have kind of this more geometric spacesuit, futuristic style thing on a mercenary, but they did bring it nicely in a TF2 style by making the paint look like it's scratched, making it more worn down, and then you have a much better, you know, screenshot here. It's pretty good. I honestly like this set. I think this takes second place, or maybe second or third place, uh, just behind that Pyro set, I'd say. It's a pretty good set. I don't think I would use it, though. Maybe... I oh, think I like the fashionable Megalomaniac a whole lot more on Medic if I, were to, if I were to go with facial hair and glasses. But again, it's not bad. It's not bad. Legacy logo. So, it's just the TF2 logo, except really bright and neon. Ah, uh, I mean, if you're gonna go with a taunt effect, uh, happy to see it tied to TF2 at least, and not have it look like it's something from a different video game, but 
just a really big particle animation that's bright and neon. Ah, taunt effects were a mistake. Probably my least hated one that I've seen so far from me looking at all of these. Warp drive. Don't we have a... It's probably redundant to say that we have effects like this already. We definitely have an effect like this already. Ah, 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 it's not great. Ah, it's, I would say painfully mediocre, but also not... It's not bad, but it's just mediocre. I really just feel neutral on this. Like, I wouldn't be happy if I unboxed this, but it's not bad. Okay, this one's just weird. This is a very bizarre... <laughs> it looks so bad. You just have this thing protruding from Snipe. You could have made it flatter. You didn't have to make it like half a foot long jutting out of his head. You could have had like a lens, like a thinner lens coming down in front of his eye at least. And then you have this giant battery pack sticking out the side with a wire. You could have simplified this down a little bit. You didn't need the chin strap. That also just looks really freaking weird. Ah, it's also not really a sniper cosmetic. It just doesn't... It doesn't mm. There's, there's all kinds of wrong with this, and I this is definitely mercenary grade. I think no one's going to use this. I think this is going to end up as trade-up fodder. I, I'll, I'll be shocked if I see anyone using this in-game, and it's not unusual. In fact, I'll go check the community... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the community market right now. I'm going to go look at the community market right now, and I guarantee you I'm going to see unusual versions of this hat for less than $50. Man, I was close. I would, listen, I was close, man. And the update's been out for what? Not even 10 hours yet? <laughs> yep, this is gonna be a resounding, uh, no thanks, not interested from most people, I suspect. Ah, uh, yay, there we go. There's our pop culture reference. Yeah, MF Doom is now in TF2. Listen, in my opinion, we don't need modern pop culture references put inside of Team Fortress 2. TF2 is a heavily stylized game that takes place during a specific time period in America or in the world, I suppose. And if you're injecting media references that happened in the 90s and 2000s into TF2, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb and not fit the game at all. I also don't think it's appropriate to reference real world people inside of TF2. Ideally, you'd like to stick with fictional characters or things that are pertinent to the time period or things that are historical and not someone so recent. I just think it's inappropriate to have these kinds of cosmetics in the game. Looking at this as just a cosmetic, if this wasn't MF Doom, it would just be a fairly inoffensive helmet. Doesn't look bad, but I just think references like this don't belong in TF2, so I can tick that box off on my bingo card. We could have had a lot worse. We could have had fucking Pickle Rick. We could have had a fucking, I don't know, Skibbity Toilet, like, Fortnite dancing bullshit. I don't fucking know. But I would expect something like this in Fortnite before Team Fortress 2. So, I don't think it belongs in the game. Even if it's paying homage to someone who's passed away, not appropriate for TF2. This one sucks. And flat. It just looks really bad. It's just, it's just ugly, too. It's the ugly neon fish effect that just it doesn't go with anything like i guess you could like unbox that shark hat for pyro and have this effect on there i just don't see anyone using this it's ugly Ugh. probably one of the worst effects they've added in a long time desert wind i can at least commend this one for not being neon color vomit a, a little more thought was put into this one you know you're moving around you're kicking up dust it's a, it's a desert storm i feel like it didn't need the PNGs you could have done without the tumbleweed, you could have done without the cow skull, you could have done without the cactus. Probably my now favorite taunt effect that I've seen so far. Desk Engineer. Okay, I've looked at this one before. This one's good. Just a simple shirt and tie cosmetic for the engineer. Fairly inoffensive, small paint region. You're only painting the, the accessories. It's just good. Just a simple cosmetic. Happy they added this one. Nothing else to say. This one's strange. So we have an evil Knievel set for Engineer? The helmet's not bad. It's not really Engineer? Maybe, I, yeah, I guess you could make an argument for like a helmet being Engineer because he's like testing some equipment or he's testing an invention or something. He doesn't want to get his head hurt. Yeah, I mean, he also has like a welding mask to protect his face, so why not a helmet to protect his head? And also goggles. Is he a stuntman? Not really. And the helmet looks fine. Like, the cosmetic itself looks fine. It's well-modeled, well-textured. I'm not offended by it. The shirt looks really bad. Like, the collar going all the way down is really chunky. The color placements look really terrible. The modeling work really, really leaves something to be desired. Like, the helmet and the shirt look like they're from two completely different sets from two completely different creators. Like, one person made the helmet, another person made the shirt. They don't match at all. 
They match for the only reason of it being the Evil Knievel set, but they look like they've been made by two totally different people because the modeling work on this one is entirely half-baked. Like, the helmet is fine. There, there's cosmetic, there's like, there's loadout potential with the helmet. But not this fucking shirt. The shirt looks really bad. <laughs> it looks really bad. Ooh, bugs, butterflies. Ah. Ah. And then we have Psychodelic. See, I feel like what they should have done I like the direction they were going, you know, hippies, 60s, TF2 takes place in the 60s and 70s, I see that working. What they could have done is they could have leaned a bit more into the psychedelic territory with the flowers. And you know, like you have like the Spongebob hibiscus, you know, they could have made it slightly more cartoony, slightly more um, caricaturized for a flower, and really, you know, exaggerated the petal shapes, made it a bit more wavy, what have you. That would have looked nicer, instead of just kind of throwing a couple of generic flower PNGs in there. I don't mind the aura effect around it, that's not the worst. I feel like they could have done a little bit more with this effect. Yeah, treasure trove. So this looks really weird. Ah, uh, yeah, you have like these... You have this effect that looked like it was made and rendered inside of Blender that was then slapped into TF2, it looks really, really out of place. Ah, yeah, it looks like they just took a particle effect from a different game and then slapped it inside of TF2. Oh my god, this looks really bad. Oh god, yeah, it looks... It, it's just really, really bad. Ah, it's a huge miss. Massive miss. Terrible. Ah. Amatory, yay, we have more wispy particle energy trails with community sparkles. Ah, slop, garbage, terrible, fucking awful. Sakura flowers we got last year, year before, can't keep track. I don't remember anymore, but now in the form of a taunt effect. Great. Medic girlfriends rejoice. Oh, it's even worse than I thought. I thought they were gonna like slowly manifest from below, but no, they fall from above and it's static PNG. Ah, uh, it's shit. Lots of dislikes on this video, I suspect, because I'm calling neon color palette swap unusual effects shit. <laughs> we have just butterflies. I, I, this is the butterfly update. Two butterfly effects? Why? This this looks like something out of Fantasia 2000. This is not a TF2 thing. So, I was really excited about this cosmetic. I think this cosmetic looks really cool. Until I saw the fucking paint region on this thing. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Great idea. Allowing for players to recolor 75% of the player model to something that is not default color. That is a great, wonderful idea. Horrible, horrible paint region. Naturally, they're very sneaky in that they only, you know, used more neutral colors. Like, oh yeah, see, it's fine. But then they don't even begin to think about, oh yeah, I'm going to be a blue spy using colors similar to slate to recolor my legs and my vest. I'll show you that, yes, you can do this. We'll do color similar to slate hat. We'll get some different skins on there. In the blink of an eye, someone's going to look at that and go, oh fuck, what team is the spy on? Like, come. This is like, I made, a, I made a whole video as to why you should not have paint regions this large. Do not do this. Fuck. Such a sh like you didn't even need a paint region for this. You could have left it just as is. And even then it looks strange. You have one, two, three, four colors all on the front here. It's a bit much. You could have just made the whole undershirt white, and that would have been fine, and then you didn't need a paint region. Ah, God. This one's okay. Brand loyalist. You have a different branded ball cap for each of the mercenaries, themed after things you see in-game, or are closely themed to what you would expect to see in-game. Pretty good. Decent cosmetic. Uh, I suspect this is probably gonna. B I didn't look at the. I didn't look at the grades on this. My guess is at least commando grade or higher. This might be the. If there's two assassin grades, this is probably the second assassin grade. I think probably the second best hat they added. Pretty good. I am shocked that they added this effect. I was helping this guy. I was giving this guy feedback on this effect years ago when he was first working on it, and I just think from like looking back on it now it really was a dud and it looks it just doesn't look like something you would see in tf2 it's this weird 3d effect that forms a crown around your head and it just it, 
it's, so, someone else is going to have to figure out a better way to execute this kind of thing because I, I couldn't figure it out. This guy couldn't figure it out. And the, the end product, it's not the worst, but it's just, it doesn't look like something you'd see in TF2. To put this in game, it's just a really bizarre choice. Oh God, this fucking garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, our first follow me around pet cosmetic. I mean, we had a few like that would follow like the shoulder, like the bird and the shit. They're like Halloween restricted. But this is like, this is like, I pray to God, please God, do not let this be the new standard. Please, please God, do not let this be the new standard. Please do not keep adding pet items that follow you around. The last thing we need is more garbage following around the player models to fuck with gameplay readability. We don't need that. We don't need more garbage and more noise on our screen. We don't need more moving shit that is not a mercenary. Please, do not add more moving shit that is not a mercenary or something that has been shot at me. We don't need shit like this. No, should not have been added. Thank God. I know this is elite grade. Thank God it's elite grade and we'll barely see this shit. Don't add stuff like this. Terrible idea. Shouldn't have been added. Brutes braces. You know, just a pretty decent heavy shirt. A lot of loadout potential. Subtle paint region. Pretty old cosmetic too, but no, no, not bad. Yeah, decent item set. I like it. You know, it's a, you know, thug or, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Mobster heavy, I suppose. Decent, not bad. Beret for scout, I guess. Not the worst. This is a really old item set. It's not bad. It, you know, more to the effect of ones we've seen for medic and, uh, you know, we also have like the Bills hat. It's not terrible. The jacket's half decent. Subtle paint region. That's a fairly mediocre jacket. One, you know, at least visually very similar to many others we have in game. I can't be offended by it, but we really didn't need another one of these. The hat's not bad. This I can see being used fairly often. And then, last but not least, Sneaky Blinder. Subtle paint region. That's a fairly mediocre jacket. One, you know, at least visually very similar to many others we have in-game. I can't be offended by it, but we really didn't need another one of these. The hat's not bad. This I can see being used fairly often. And then, last but not least, Sneaky Blinder. Reference to Peaky Blinder, I guess. No, it's too old for that. Um, yeah, decent spy hat. Pretty good. That's, didn't we have the other one? In, we, we have this one in game. Yeah, we do. We have this in game. It took them this long to add the other one? I guess that technically counts as adding a broken up item set, but they completed the item set, so I don't know if I want to take that off on my bingo card. Decent hat, I guess? I, I'm not offended by it. Pretty decent. That's yeah, alright. Yeah, generally, it's, I would say it's a mixed bag. A few decent unusual effects. Most of them are pretty bad. A mixed bag of cosmetics. Some are pretty decent. The other ones are pretty bad. Like, I just... I cannot believe they added these. I cannot believe they added these horrible, horrible Tropic Crisis cosmetics. Holy God. And again, I feel like the norm moving forward is people are going to get together, band together, and make these community updates that are going to get hyper, you know, they're going to get hyped up by the community, hyped up by YouTubers, like, this is the update we need. It's going to get pushed by a whole bunch of tubers. It's going to get a shitload of upvotes. Eric Smith's going to see it, and then it's going to get added simply because of a whole bunch of positive votes, and the items end up being fucking terrible. Ah! And then what's worse is, like, I can see it getting clicky, because the workshop is very clicky. If you've been following me for any extended period of time, you know the workshop for TF2 is very small and very clicky. So you're going to get small, tight-knit, organized groups organizing these community updates and excluding people that they don't like, and then pushing these updates, they're going to get a bunch of traction, so it's further monopolization of what does and does not get in the game. Ah, uh, just don't see this going in a good direction in the foreseeable future, and I guarantee you... This is not going to be the last of the community updates we see in the coming years. Mark my words. If I'm wrong, I'll eat crow. But for now, I think I'm right. Okay, we're going to go in update order here. First up, I'm loading up Payload Embargo. Just, I can't... I don't know why they decided to add this one. I really don't. Okay, first up, Payload Embargo. First thing I see before I even load into the map is that this just doesn't look like a TF2 map. I'm seeing a lot of that same sentiment being passed around, but no one's really hitting the nail on the head as to why. And there's two main reasons why. First main reason is that, at least with classical TF2 maps, like the original six maps and a lot of maps that came afterwards, TF2 maps are specifically designed 
to not be visually cluttered. TF2 maps are designed to be very simple, where just enough detail is incorporated into the backgrounds, into the backdrops, to give the player a sense that, oh, I'm inside of a unique environment without putting too much visual details in front of them that would otherwise clutter their field of view and detract from being able to read what's going on during gameplay. And then the other, like, major, and, and a couple other things too, right? So one major reason is, like, this very much does not look like a TF2 setting. It looks like you have recreated a scene from South America and then simply slapped it into TF2. You have a couple of elements that look vaguely reminiscent of TF2, like these boxes here, like, oh, look, the doors. But it's just this mishmash of things that don't feel like TF2 at all. You have some elements here and there, like, oh, a couple of pieces of TF2 signage, and like, oh, look, red team. But then other areas of the map, like, especially here, this is a big problem. So, the second main thing when it comes to TF2 maps is that the environments, the areas that you're in, are primarily neutrally colored, or they're very lightly team colored. You don't have this much saturation of team color spread around the map. TF2 maps were originally designed to play heavily on neutral colors with only small elements of team color to remind people of where they are. You know, you have the holograms around the points, you have small team-colored assets and details around the map that, you know, remind people of where they are, like, oh yeah, I'm on red side, I'm on blue side, but it's not a heavily saturated wall of red or blue saying, you are on red, or you are on blue. The perfect example of this is, say, go look at CP Well, darker browns, rusty reds. And, and like lighter grays like this, but you don't have huge sweeping walls of this saturated red. Then you go over to blue side. You have lighter grays, lighter washed out blues. You don't have a massive wall of saturated blue pushed in your face of like, you are on blue side. That's why Embargo really doesn't look like a TF2 map, because it's incorporating too much of these saturated colors. And yes, even though these are TF2 textures, the creators or people who worked on this map very much pointed that out, even though these are TF2 textures, these were incorporated into the game to be small, accentuating details on an otherwise neutrally or lightly team-colored map. And then, in tandem with all the other smaller visual details, it makes for a very overly saturated, too bright, and too visually cluttered environment that really makes it not look like a TF2 map. And then you have other smaller details like this strange cartoony toucan. This weird mascot doesn't look stylized for TF2's, you know, game at all. What's this graffiti? This isn't TF2. This feels like it's from a different game entirely. Small things like that that really kind of mishmash together and it makes it not feel like TF2 at all. Obviously, a lot of effort and a lot of work went into making this, but it really falls short on birthing a TF2 environment. That's why I don't like it. I've also played on this map. This map plays like absolute shit. It's honestly one of the poorer choices, and I really don't think this map should have been put in the game. I really do need to make a video properly outlining what makes a map a TF2 map, and the, I, and the two main points of having too much visual clutter and also having too much of the saturated team colors, that's like the two main things that this map absolutely drops the ball on that make it not look like a TF2 map. And even things like these walls here, like, this is way too much noise and detail. Like, compare this backdrop to, say, the two-fort backdrop, or, like, any backdrop on Upward, for example. You don't have this many, this much small detail and noise and clutter thrown everywhere, right? Because the idea is, like, okay, I'm playing as the scout. I'm running around here. I come around this corner. I should be able to immediately identify someone standing somewhere. And then if I were to put, say, a person on red team standing right here, they're going to blend into all this noise and all this other saturated red, and they're not going to contrast as strongly with the environment that they're in. The idea is that you're able to spot someone who is friend or foe very easily, even at great distances. And when you put this much small detail, like envision putting someone on a red team all the way back here, standing against this saturated wall. They're not going to stick out very strongly at all. Like, let me go into third person here. I can go over to, say, this blue wall, I don't contrast with this wall very strongly at all. From a distance, you're only going to see my head and you're only going to see my pants. Sure, the shades of blue are slightly different, but that really impacts readability of people on your team and also on the other team. That's why you don't have these massive areas of red or blue saturation. That's probably the main problem with this map, and again, why it doesn't look like a TF2 map at all. They really should have thought of this when they were making this map. They clearly did a lot of work, but they really didn't study just like the basic fundamentals of what makes a TF2 map a TF2 map.
You can go look at the fucking developer commentary. They say the exact same points that I did on maps like CTF well. It's from the developer's mouth. It's not mine. I didn't pull this out of my ass, right? That's why this doesn't look right. That's why this doesn't look like a TF2 map. So, it just it just doesn't belong in the game. And it plays like shit. So, yeah. And then when we come over to something like CTF Applejack, this one also suffers slightly from the same problem. They don't incorporate nearly as much of the saturated blue and red, especially on the blue side. The blue side really doesn't suffer from it that much. But the red side does. So if I go over to the red side, for example, they incorporate a lot more of that saturated red into the buildings. See what I mean? Thankfully, the areas where the players are mostly going to be, which is down here, is much more of the washed out and neutral tones. So it's not going to strongly negatively impact gameplay. Like, especially in and inside around here, this really feels like a TF2 map. And even out here, you're not getting a lot of that saturated red. This wall, like this wall you are. Like, like the, this this texture right here really shouldn't have been used as a, like a primary building builder, building texture, whatever you want to call it. That's why this map also feels a little bit out of place with TF2 style. There's also something going on with the lighting. I'm, it's, it may or may not be the lighting. I'm, I'm not a map maker, so I can't really explain perfectly why this looks odd. But there's something going on with the, the lighting that makes the map feel too saturated or too vibrant. Something very similar to what Phoenix does. So that's why it also looks somewhat odd. Thankfully, this map does play really well. And when it comes to kind of like the visual violations of what makes a TF2 map a TF2 map, this one is a far less egregious offender than Embargo is. So it also play it, again, map plays pretty well. It feels like it wanted to be a King of the Hill map instead. I feel like they could have probably turned this shed into a control point instead of just this closed off area. I think it would have made for a much more fun King of the Hill map. I think I played a King of the Hill version of this before on a community server. I might be misremembering, but I have played on this map before, either CTF or King of the Hill. It played pretty well. I played, like, Engineer over, like, over here somewhere, I think is what I was doing. Okay, so now I've loaded into Odyssey, and I'm being struck with the same problem where I have been presented with something that is not a Team Fortress 2 map. I see elements of TF2 in here, like, oh, look, we have the Red Team Hologram. And then we have random pieces of, like, shed, facade, and wood beam structures just kind of haphazardly placed around here. But I look at this, and I see elements of TF2 just kind of haphazardly slapdash placed all over Greece. Like, it's not it's not TF2 to me at all. I'm looking around the map, like, that's TF2 asset. This looks like TF2. This looks like TF2. But then you have all these random assets and pieces from Team Fortress 2 just kind of pieced together and slapped into Greece. It doesn't just, just doesn't look like a TF2 map at all. I've not played on this map yet, or rather I have. I've played on it for two seconds at this point, and fighting around here is raw aids because of how steep this hill slope is. And blue has a huge advantage, so all they have to do is just aim down. Like, this feels like TF2. Like, if I... If, if, here's the thing. If I ignore everything that's Greece up here, and I just look here, that looks like a TF2 map. This feels like TF2, but then I come over here, this does not. Something is wrong. We have two different stylizations being slapped together into a TF2 map. Again, I need to make a proper video outlining, like, the correct way to make a map stylized for Team Fortress 2. And not whatever happened here. And the thing is, the additional problem is I feel, and like, this is... Whoop, Something else about TF2, man, is that you don't have gargantuan machinery like this. At least not in, like, your traditional TF2 maps. Like, I'm talking, like, original six maps, right? The thing about TF2 is you have these facilities that look like they were kind of rapidly pieced together, or pieced together using a whole bunch of smaller components and elements that are built into the existing Earth and the existing world. And you get a little bit of that on this map. Like, you get some of it here, some of it on the earlier stages, right? Where you have those TF2 elements sticking in and around, but you don't have enough of them. You have enough of them here, where you have a lot of stuff built into the hillside. Like, it, like this angle looks good, but over out here, there's just not enough of it. And, and maps like Egypt and Lakeside also suffer from this same problem. Except when it comes to Egypt and, and, um, and Lakeside, it's very dusty and very arid, so that feels more TF2. And the Egyptian stuff doesn't really mix doesn't really mix in that well. Again, I gotta make a proper video really hammering out and thinking about the right way to piece together a TF2 map. Because pieces of this look like TF2, but 
in general, some of these other like 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 large heavy machinery like this, this big huge thing on the last point, this is just some not something you see in TF2 ever, really. I don't know. I got I got I got to sit down and really think about it. <laughs> my god. I already see the problems with this one. Oh my sweet Jesus. Let's let's go have a look, shall we? Let's go take a let's take, let's take a peek here. Raised hilltop, pretty pretty nasty fucking sightline. That's that that was my fear. Ah, yeah. This is ooh. Ooh, this is going to be hell to play on. It's it's somehow like a worse version of Harvest. And also, it, it takes the worst parts of Lakeside and Harvest and puts them into one map, by the looks of it. Just because of how open the point is. Like, I feel like if they raised the point more, and like, like that, this sucks. This sucks, all that sucks, that's like, you're gonna push out of here, man. You're gonna push out of here, and you're immediately going to die from a sniper looking over this way, and if they have control of the point, whoever's standing over here, that sucks. The only spawn, like, even this spawn, you immediately walk out of spawn, and you're greeted by the sniper that just walked out of their spawn over there, and you fucking die. Ugh, they really should have thought about that, with the coverage on this one, too. Coming out of here, you come out of here and immediately die to the... Oh my god! If they don't have snipers on their team, which they will, then this map might play rather well, but it's just too open. This is gonna be AIDS to play on with any with any competent sniper on the enemy team. This like that is really really bad. Like ah yeah yeah just flank bro. Okay so you have to cross that sight line or this sight line. You have or if you flank all the way around here. Like okay you can go over this way, but then you get domed by whatever's chilling out over there. It's like yeah just flank bro and the entire map is fucking open. Oh god, I've not played on this one yet. So gonna see how it goes, but. Just first impressions gonna suck. Okay, we are on to something I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Kasharia. Kasharia. I don't know how to say it. I, I don't know how to say it. Not played on this one yet. Gonna need to see. Like this, this already, like this from the Tropic Crisis. I think this is Tropic Crisis map. This already feels a lot more like TF2. Because you have a lot more of the facilities built into the surrounding earth and surrounding geometry. And it feels more earthy and natural rather than than just grease, right? Like these buildings, not so much. These don't really feel like TF2 too much, but they're not like super imposing and super overwhelming and taking up too much of the visual real estate. So that's fine when it comes to stylization. Like there's enough TF2 on this one where I'm like, okay, I'm playing a TF2 map. Several pathways to the point, which you like to see. That's good. You're not immediately greeted by awful sight lines coming out towards the point. This isn't too bad. Can someone stand over there? Nope, that's just off in the water. You can be down here. So that could be a pain, but that's only one really gnarly sight line. That's not too bad. A lot of real estate over here. Decent, actually decent flank this way. Yeah, okay. This is pretty good for a King of the Hill map. A lot of, ver a lot of verticality, a lot of different cover to play on. Decent flanks. Cool area. Oh, this is fun. This is going to be fun. Okay. All right, here we go. Fun underground flanking area. You can see him coming if you look down there. I dig it. Area up here for the play around. I should be using the winger so I can move around more. Decent, like, little battlements area up here. Can you get on the roof? Yes, you can. How about over here? I wonder if you can build up here. Curious. This is fun. Decent verticality. A lot of stuff to play around on. This is, this is, this looks like this is going to be a fun map. Another problem that a lot of King of the Hill maps suffer from is they end up making them a little too big. And so I, honestly, I kind of prefer the more claustrophobic ones. This one doesn't feel too tight, but pretty good. This one looks like it's going to play quite nicely. Also, a nice detail by adding blood splatters onto the, onto the rotors after someone jumps into them. That's a nice touch. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I can see this one being fun. I dig it. Yeah, so now we have CP Overgrown. This is not a fun map at all. In fact, I think this map sucks. Uh, this is one that Crash has been working on for a very long time, and finally they put his baby into the game, and I think it's utter dog shit. I've had the, I've had the misfortune of playing this map some years ago in like a weird YouTuber get-together thing for charity, and playing on this map is raw fucking ass, unless you're playing Engineer and you're playing in specific spots where it becomes Borderline impossible for anyone to push. So, like, you have a lot of this dead area to push through first before you even get to this first point. And then out here, 
it's just so open. You place one decent sentry. I remember playing that fucking YouTuber match game. When there was just a sentry here. I shit you not, it took like 20 minutes to kill this one fucking gun that was up here. It was horrible. And then this, this whole area is just so fucking open, man. Look at this. You can have one sniper covering pretty much anywhere where someone can appear and dome them. That sucks. It's a nasty spaghetti bowl. First point is not as bad as the second, or the, the third, the final point, rather. This last point sucks. Because you can just nestle an engineer over here. And then you never fucking win. Pushing into this point is fucking AIDS. I think compies play this map. Don't quote me on that. I think they do. But just like, <laughs> so open. Oh, God. Yeah, this map sucks. Really shouldn't have been added. It just... It's, it's a dud. Like, Crash has done way better maps than this one. It just doesn't belong in the game, simply because of how badly it plays. Uh, there's way better attack defend maps that exist on the workshop. This is not one of them. A fucking mistake. They shouldn't have added this. Now we have CP Hadal. Uh, at least I think I'm pretty... Is that a submarine? Yellow submarine. Clever. That looks like TF2. Like, they did, they did the right type of geometry and stylization. This feels TF2-y. I appreciate that. Whoa, this is very Aperture Science. Aperture Science looking. I kind of appreciate that. That's interesting. So you are... The fact, I need, the fact I need a map to navigate the map is a little disconcerting. I've never seen this map before, but the fact they felt obligated to put, like, a map of the map right when you leave spawn... Ah, uh, it's very yellow. It's very yellow. I understand they went with, like, three different sectors... One closer to red spawn, one closer to your spawn, and then, like, the middle area. That's kind of interesting. It's very yellow. I don't know if I like the color coordinate, or the, the color, the color, uh, the color choice for yellow. This one's cool. Does the point go up? I just, this looks like it's made for the point to rise upwards. I think, I, actually, I think I've played on this map before, if memory serves me right. I think I have played this map before. Yes, I have played on this map before. Yeah, so this plays kind of like Steel, in that you have the main point open at all times, and it gets easier and easier to capture as you move through the other ones. It's a little bit harder to navigate than CP Steel from my memory. It's been at least a year or two since I played on this map. Probably a year, but I don't know. I remember having a decently good time playing on it. It looks like TF2. It feels like TF2. It looks cool. Let me see here. So you go to A, you cap A, then you move to sector B. You do no clip again. It gets a little bit spaghetti bowl. People tend to get pretty... I remember people getting lost on this a lot. It's going to take a lot of, like, playing on it to remember where you need to go. I suspect it's going to be a pretty major turnoff for a lot of people when they first start playing on this one. But I think it's going to play pretty well in casual. We'll see. It's not too claustrophobic, but I feel like the navigation is going to be an issue. Definitely like this one a lot more than the first two payload maps. This still feels very TF2. The yellow is still kind of strange. I feel like they could have done a different color. I don't know what, though. Maybe a mix of red and blue. Like half red, half blue, and they kind of meet in the middle here. Maybe that would have been, that would have been a nicer middle ground, and they could have kept like the hazard stripes in some spots. To kind of like, oh yeah, this is more like a neutral area maybe, instead of just yellow. Minor nitpick on the visuals, but otherwise, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, we'll have to see how it plays. Now we have Atom Smash, which is just the non-Halloween version of Monster Bash. Monster Bash is probably one of my favorite newer generation Halloween maps. I guess if I were to separate old school and new school Halloween maps. Really enjoy player destruction as a game mode because it introduces team deathmatch in a way that's TF2 friendly, in that the objective still isn't explicitly player based players who are like players who suck at the game can still move around and capture dropped souls and contribute to the game because the definition of like a proper TF2 game mode is one where the objective is not only the other people you're playing against which is why like a true team deathmatch mode is not really appropriate for the game because the game is designed to be as appealing to as many different skill levels as possible and as there and as many different levels of engagement as possible so when you make a game mode's primary objective the players you're fighting against it relies entirely on skill and then therefore the better player is just always going to win. Whereas for, TF2, whereas for TF2, it's much more friendly to a much wider range of skill levels. So when the objective is like a payload cart or a point, 
or a flag, or in this case, dropped souls, even shitty players can go like, oh, look, there's a soul. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to go take it to big glowy thing. Look, I'm helping my team. They still contribute to the game, even though they suck. And because TF2 is designed to be a fun and engaging game for as many people as possible, and that's why it stood the test of time. And it's a bit of a shame that all player destruction maps, like, um, like Watergate, for example, are relegated into miscellaneous and not their own game mode tab. So when the summer update is over, this map is just going to get shunted into miscellaneous hell and we're never going to see it populated ever again. Which is a bit of a shame because the map is really cool. Can I go down here or do I die? Yeah, you just die. Shame. I was hoping for like some other kind of a pit, but I guess there isn't one. I'm actually happy to see this one. I'm really happy to see this map in the game. I Normal Monster Bash plays really well. I'm excited to play this without Halloween Souls kind of mucking the experience up. Very fun. Very exciting. Uh, can't wait to play it. And now we have CP Canaveral. Like Cape Canaveral, Florida, because they're launching, you know, the space shuttle. Cute name, cute nod to NASA and all that. Feels like NASA. Feels like 60s NASA. To do. Can I read this? 5 CP is very hit and miss inside of TF2. Sometimes the maps feel a little bit too big. Sometimes the maps feel a little bit too big. Other times they feel a little bit too claustrophobic. This one seems okay. Oh, I've played this one. Yeah, this one I've played. I think it appears in my uh, my video about the decay of war paints. Yeah, this seems okay for 5 CP. If I'm remembering correctly, this is a map that I have played on. Yeah, I think this one, from my memory, if my memory serves right, this one did play reasonably well for 5 CP. Stalemates are just expected for 5 CP, but when it comes to stalemates on other 5 CP maps, the ones on here didn't feel terrible. This is interesting. So you have an opportunity to really contest the point without having to actually get up onto it, right? You can get some decent spam up there, some, you, you, know, you can also hide from it as well. So you get, you get punished if you hang out here too long. Sightlines aren't too bad either, so you're not immediately punished by a sniper peeking his head out and just fucking killing you in one, in, you know, in, in a heartbeat. So that's cool. Yeah, this one seems fun too. Looks pretty good. You know, like if you're gonna do like the tropical setting, right, like the, like the South America setting, you really have to make it feel like it's built into the surrounding environment, right? That's like the thing I was trying to get at earlier. If you're gonna do a TF2 map, you have to really make it feel like it's built into the surrounding environment, the surrounding Earth, and the surrounding like I don't know place you're in. Like, the red and team, red, red and blue have moved in and have set up shop. And there's remnants of the place that they built into still around in there. It's also very environment and scene dependent. Like, you can get away with a lot less on something like Upward or Badwater. Because you let the Badlands aesthetic really carry you most of the way without having to place in too much or too many buildings, right? Cool stuff. Good map. I think it's a good map. I played on it. If I'm, if I'm remembering right, I played on it, so it seems neat. Yes, finally we have CP Berghausen. I am I'm really happy that Valve is like giving a little nod towards medieval mode. As goofy and silly as it is, I'm really happy that they're like, yeah, sure, fuck it. We'll we'll throw in another one that is not like a weird sandcastle with spells. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I've not played on this map, at least I don't think I have. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. You know, oh yeah, I think this is this is going to be the shit. I think this map is multi-stage, if memory serves. Yes, yes, this is going to be so fun. Oh, I can't wait. Yes, all right, yeah, I'm excited. I cannot wait to play this inside of a full server. I hope this map stays populated, but just like Group Keep, it's going to get relegated to miscellaneous hell, and outside of the update season, this map's not going to be populated. Hopefully it will be, but again, really nice to see we're getting more... Medieval mode maps in the game. I, I hope it's fun. Seems like it's going to be fun. Uh, Shonik put out his usual video covering all of the new content. Let's see how some of these things look in game. Hold on, let me just turn this off. So, okay, so, oh, here we go. We can actually see all the cosmetics now. Let me do this at, like, times two speed so I'm not taking all y'all's time. Oh, what the fuck? That looks nothing like the promos you see on the workshop. What? <laughs> it looks, it doesn't even look the same. It's, like, nice and shiny and silver in the promo, but in the game, it's just this dull-ass helmet. Ah, ooh. I mean, at least, okay, so, like, yeah, the screenshots here are, like, okay, yeah, it's not super, I guess, I guess it's also lighting-dependent. It's probably lighting-dependent, but, ah, just... Bit, bit of a shit cosmetic. It's Okay, so he's, he's also doing it in the order of the grades. Okay. Yeah, that one looks not bad. It's all right. That hat still looks like utter shit. Shouldn't have been added. 
<laughs> His arms look so chunky. Ah, uh, oh god, it looks so bad. I don't know why. It's, it's not as bad as the soldier one. At least he got like the collarbone going on in there. His neck is so thick. Oh my god, his neck is so thick. Look, he's got like a little pinhead. Ah, oh, it's weird. No. Okay, yeah, that cosmetic actually looks pretty good. It look, it's pretty decent. I appreciate that. <laughs> look at his fucking, look at his hands. I can't get over this, dude. Oh my god, look at this shit. Oh my god, it looks so bad. He's got sausage arms, man. Oh, the boys had too much salt. Get him some water. Oh, look at this. He's retaining so much. His forearms are thicker than his fucking upper arms, dude. And look at his wrists. Like, the width of his wrists is bigger than his hands. Look at this. Look how tiny his hands are. Oh, my God. Wow. That is... This This cosmetic is a fucking tragedy. It's clipping with itself. Yeah, I, I, I had the right assessment in that this helmet would look pretty good in-game. Yeah, or the helmet looks pretty good, not that it looks good in-game. But yeah, this is this is pretty neat. I'm, I'm the least offended by this one thus far, looking at Shonix's video. It's pretty good. Also, the heavy shirt's good, I should say. I feel like the, the, the pen and pencil look a little goofy. Like a little, little kind of like stapled on. You could have probably done without the stuff in the pocket and could have just gone with the name tag. Minor nitpick. Wait, did they? This looks chunky too. Why does it look chunky? Something is wrong here. Why is that chunky? And you have the brand loyalists. I'm not going to go through all of the different styles on that, but I think this hat looks fine. I think it's pretty good. Decent cosmetic. Oh, wait, this is only a mercenary grade? What? That's going to be... Wow. I'm actually happy they made that mercenary grade. Easily accessible, decent ball cap that's unique for each class. Pretty good. So for some reason they made... Oh, that looks really weird. Oh, God. Yeah, they... See, this was another fear that I had when it came to this pyro set, is that it didn't really match his default colors that well. It's more faded and washed out, and it's really, really evident with the pants cosmetic. It looks like they took a character, cut it in half, and then stuck the pyro on top. So on its own, this pants cosmetic looks really bad. Like, you have to wear it with the rest of the set in order for it to look acceptable. Ooh, that looks really, really, really bad in-game. Ah, uh, ooh, it just goes to show that Workshop promotional images do not tell you the full story. And oftentimes, paint a much more glorified image than what you actually get in-game. This looks like... Uh, I mean, if you showed me this next to, like, the other five scout jackets we have, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you the difference. Does it look bad? No. Am I offended by this? No. But it's certainly nothing special. Yeah, it's okay. This one's fine. I need kind of some clipping action up there. This one's okay. Fairly a, a fairly inoffensive hat. So is this one. This one's just a simple, like, very very reminiscent of, like, classic TF2. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Why? Oh, look at his fucking legs. Look at his legs, dude. Oh, talk about overstuffed sausages. My god. The dude's got diabetes. Something's wrong with him. Look, he's got fucking cankles. They gave the soldier fucking cankles. It looks really bad. His It looks like they stuffed loaves of bread in the shoes <laughs> it's just so bad oh i cannot believe they added this set it looks horrible it looks horrible i can't get over it uh this is fine uh, just you know generic spy hat it's okay this looks a little less bad in game but it's still not good just the weird collar geometry and the way it's modeled is really mediocre. Just not a good cosmetic at all. It needed more time in the oven. The hat's fine. The hat the hat for this set is fine. I think it looks pretty good. Like, it's definitely the best part of the set. Definitely has a lot of loadout potential with other pyro cosmetics. It's decent. That just looks good. I'm okay with this. Shame it's assassin grade. I'm still going to use my fashionable megalomaniac for medic, though. I'm, I'm still going to stick with, like this i just i can't i can't not i still think this is the best beard and glasses combo for medic it just looks too good it just looks really bad it just looks really really bad fucking looney tunes ass hat and these horrible glasses oh man only you can prevent forest fires see this is fine it like th this this is the style by the way this style too allows you to repaint 70% of Spy's player model into a different color. 
Why the hell did they think this was a good idea? Oh, they made this Elite Grade. Okay. I guess that's the proper choice. It does change a lot on the player model. Honestly, this is probably the best one-to-one -one translation of the Workshop Showcase and the in-game result. It looks pretty okay. That does not. That is garbage. Why the fuck did they add this? Why do we... We don't need pets. We don't need pets in TF2. We don't need shit like this. It's just beyond inappropriate. We don't need... I already said this. We don't need random junk following the mercenaries around. We already have the shoulder pets that hover behind them. We don't need more visual clutter running around the screen that is, again, not a mercenary or not something that has been shot at you. Ugh. Horrible thing to add in this game. You don't need... The, you sh this should not be in the game. I hope to God this doesn't become the standard. And it looks like shit. Who's gonna use this? No one's gonna use... Let's find out. Some idiot spent $200 on this. And it's not even strange. Oh my god. What? Uh, oh my god. I can't get over this, dude. This is some... Who? Who? Identify yourself. I want to know who you are. Are you one of those suspiciously wealthy furries? What? Who are you? Who did this? This is a fucking crime. I can't believe that. And then, like, it follows you around because, like, listen, man, you're a brand new player. You are a brand new player. You've never seen TF2 before. You are presented with this amalgam of shit that is shooting at you. You're going to want to shoot at anything that moves as part of the entity attacking you. This is something that is not part of the enemy attacking you. This is going to fuck with people. Veteran players? No. But newer players, absolutely. And then with the veteran players, this just adds more visual noise and garbage on the screen that just should not be there. There is no benefit from having this in the game. It only detracts from the gameplay. Do not add fucking pets to TF2. Oh, it looks so bad. Listen, guy who made this, I know I was trying to help you, but it just couldn't. It looks bad. I, it just does. It really does. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm looking at an asset from a pixel game. Like some pixel art game or what have you. Like conceptually, it can be done. Conceptually, it can be done. But this execution is just not... Not like... If I unbox that, I'd be upset. It doesn't even look finished. This looks really bad. I look like... This is like a Sega like cabinet game that I'm playing inside of a movie theater. Look at this. It's horrible. Ugh. It's hideous. <laughs> These are all horrible. It's so funny because people get really mad at me for being like overly negative on stuff in TF2. I think I have every right to be negative with this shit that they're throwing in. This is just unacceptable. It's so bad. Oh, why don't you just like everything it's put in the game? To which I respond, no. Mm, eh. Honestly, yeah, that's just the best effect they added in this update. Cuban smoke just looks too good. No, it looks so bad. <laughs> Look at this. Look, I love how Shonik had to turn the fucking thing to show that this is a 2D sprite. And if you're looking at it dead on, it's flat. It looks so bad. Also, completely different cartoon stylization from a different video game, by the way. Easily one of the worst effects they've added in this game is this one. It's awful. They could have tightened this one up, now that I'm seeing this. They could have brought all of the sparkles in closer to the head and not have it be such a big cloud. I think that would have benefited from... that. This would have benefited from that a lot and made it look a bit better. This one's nice. Now that I'm seeing this one in-game, this one's actually quite nice. It's very much a discount nebula. Sure, Trader Main's gonna get pissed off like, oh, they just want nebula. Yes! We'd like to have things that look like nebula on hats, aside from the ones that came in the invasion update, of which there are six. Hello? We'd like those things in other hats. The only other alternative is like Neutron Star, or hideously expensive Halloween effects that are too old now and have been hyperinflated into oblivion. So, good to have another option like this. I'm not offended by it. I think it looks quite good. That does not look good. At all. Looks weird, because, like, you have these things coming in and through the face. Ugh. Yeah, that looks really weird. Like, they're, like, stabbing and going into his model. Ugh, it looks really bad. It's shit. 
Honestly, just get rid of... No flowers on this. Just get rid of the flowers. Then it's fine. That also looks... I feel like I am watching... I feel like I'm watching Madoka Magica. Like, this is, this is something... This is, a, this is a particle effect out of an anime. Like, they, they got some 3D CG in here to accentuate the animation or, like, or to, like, you know, fill it up instead of having to actually draw something. I feel like I'm watching anime with this one. Looks terrible. I don't like it. Taunt effects were a fucking mistake. I think that's it. I think that's everything in the update. So, I would say, overall, that's a mixed bag. Some, I would say a small handful of decent cosmetics. A lot of them are either mediocre or really bad. One or two, maybe three decent unusual effects. The rest are fucking garbage. All of the taunt effects are garbage. Except maybe the desert one and maybe the TF2 logo one. Those are acceptable, but the rest are... Pretty shit. Some of the maps look terrible and don't feel like they belong in TF2 at all. A couple I played on, like Overgrown, Overgrowth, whatever, plays like shit, shouldn't have been accepted. Other ones look really fun. Happy to see the Degroot keep at, or not Degroot keep, I'm happy to see Medieval Mode added again. And a couple of other ones like, what is it, Hadal and what have you, those seem like they're going to be fun, if I'm remembering correctly having played on them. And the 5 CP, you know, Cape Canaveral, that looks fun. Um, so... Definitely more positives for the maps. Only a couple of stinkers or a few stinkers there. Like, three out of the seven look like shit. The other seven are, I would say, either acceptable or probably going to be very fun. Definitely better than last year's batch of maps. Last year's batch of summer maps was really, really bad. Only a couple of good ones. This year's, a lot more promising than last year's. Hopefully, the good ones remain populated. Gonna remain positive. Hopefully, they do. We'll see. Sorry for this not being a stream. I know people expect it to stream, but again, I'm this is gonna take like a year to upload. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to see if I can get this uploaded in some kind of timely manner. I suspect I won't be able to. I'll try. I'll be back soon. Currently working on my next video. Don't worry, I'm actually working on it here because you know I'm on vacation, so I have like downtime. I'm script writing and teaching myself how to use Blender because I want to make shit in 3D. And Blender is a lot easier to learn than Source Filmmaker, so gonna teach myself how to use Blender. So, nice. Uh, that's it. That's the update. Go have fun on the new maps, because most look pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I'm not spending a dime. By the way, I'm not opening any of the cases. I, I, I refuse to spend money on the game until I've been shown that Valve is willing to keep the bots out of the game. And if they continue to do that for the foreseeable future, half a year then maybe I'll be enticed to open a case if it doesn't suck or buy an item off the community market. But beyond that, I'm not spending a dime on the game until I'm shown that it's going to be worth my time. That's it.